All right, today we're talking about lesson 1.13, which is about dividing decimals by whole numbers. So you should have written down in your notebook that your learning goal for today is to be able to divide a decimal by a whole number. That's right there. Okay, good. But first, let's talk about the problem of the day. What is division? What, when do we do division in, your, in math? What, is divi what does division mean? Go ahead and talk about that with your group. Division. division can be used for grouping. When I want to split something, a total, nu a total number, into smaller groups, I can divide them into a certain number of groups. Like we have 30 students. Could I divide you up into groups of five? Yes. If I divided you into groups of five, how many groups would I have all together? Yes. Because I can divide 30 divided by five to find out that I have six groups all together. So that's one way of using division is grouping. Is there another way of using division? It's very important to note that when we do division, all those groups, when I'm doing grouping, I have to have an equal number in each group, don't I? Could I use division in a different way? Could I say I have 30 candies and I want to give three people the same number of candies? How many, how many pieces of candy will each person get? Is that division two? How, how many pieces of candy would each person get? Ten. How did you know that? What math problem did you think in your head? Uh, Ella? 30 divided by three. Right. I already knew how many groups of people were getting candy. How many groups were there? Three. three. And I wanted to figure out how many pieces of candy each person could get. So that's called sharing. You could also use division when you want to figure out if people have to share something equally to find out how many pieces each person would get. Okay. Now, when we do division, there are three different parts, okay? The first number that's being divided is always called the dividend. Everyone say dividend. dividend. Okay, so in this case, when we have 15 divided by 3, 15 is the dividend. I want you to write down this simple division problem with the labels so that you can have an example of what is the dividend. The second number, the number it's being divided by, is called the divisor. Okay, so in this case, 3 is the divisor. Everyone say divisor. Divisor. Finally, the answer, the five in this case, the answer to a division problem is called the quotient. Everyone say quotient. quotient. Okay, so we can know that today we're going to divide a decimal. We're going to have a decimal dividend divided by a whole number divisor, okay? And we're going to use what we know about place value to help us do that. Some division problems, okay? You don't need to write this part down. I'll tell you when you need to start writing it down again. This first problem, we have nine-tenths divided by three. So if I wanted to model 9 tenths in my place value chart, what would I have to draw? How many disks would I have to draw and where? Alina? Um, you would have to draw 9 disks in the tenths place. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'd have to draw 9 disks in the tenths place. Now, I want to divide those. I want to share those equally by how many groups? 3. So I can put 1 in this one, 1 here, and 1 here. Do I have more disks to share? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to continue. One, two, three. Remember, Lauren brought up a good point. When we share them, we have to make sure they're shared equally. Do I have more disks to share? Yes. Okay, so I can just put this one here, this one here, and this one here. Okay, I'm out of disks. Does each group have an equal amount? Yes. How many is in each group? Election? Three. And three of what? Three. So when I share 9 tenths equally amongst three groups, how much does each group get? 3 tenths. So 9 tenths divided by 3 is 3 tenths. Okay, let's look at the next one. I have 24 what? 24 hundredths. You got it. So I could draw 24 disks in the hundredths, but I don't really want to do that. So I'm just going to write 24 hundredths. And I want to split it equally by how many groups? I want to share them equally by how many groups? Visish? Four. Okay, so I'm going to draw myself four groups down here. So one, two, three, and then down here, four. And how many could go in each group if I want to share it equally amongst four groups? Forty? <coughs> six. So I could put six of them here, six of them here, six of them here, and six of them here. So when I share 24 hundredths by four groups equally, how much does each group get? Lakshan? 0 0.6, would that be 6? What, remember, what place value am I working on here? Hun you got it. So it would be 6 hundredths or 0 0.06. Same thing with the thousands. How many thousands do I have in that third problem, Alex? Uh, I think we have 
32,000. So I could write 32 in the thousands column. And I want to split it by how many groups? Eight. eight. I want to share equally by eight groups. So how many could go in each group, Ashwin? Four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When I share 32 thousandths equally by eight groups, how much does each group get? Alina? Four thousandths, or 0 0.04. Now, here we have represented one, one, and five tenths to do one and five tenths. Ben, put your hand down. I promise I'll give you time to ask questions later, but I want you to write this down in your notebook. Now, we want to divide that by five. Can we divide one, one by five? No. Is there a better way to represent this number that will help us divide it by five? So I could regroup this one and turn it into 10 tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, do I have any ones left? No. Instead, how many tenths do I have, Sherilyn? Fifteen tenths. Why is it better to think of 1.5 as 15 tenths rather than 1 and 5 tenths? Talk about it at your table group. Why is this better? So because we already know the math fact 15 divided by 5 equals what? Three. Three. It's much better to think of 1.5 as 15 tenths because 15 is that number we need. Does that make sense? So looking at this, based on what we did on the previous slide, what is 15 tenths divided by 5? Three tenths, so that we know that right away the answer is three tenths. Now that we have thought about our math facts and we know that 30 is really easily divisible by 5 and 15 is really easily divisible by 5, we just have to figure out is it 30 ones, is it 30 tenths, is it 30 hundredths, is it 30 thousandths? What do I have here? How many, 30 of what's? So all you need to do is look at the zero and say what place value is this in? Tenths. Tenths, so I have 30 what? Okay, so I know that this is 30 tenths. And now let's talk about the 15. Is it 15 ones, 15 tenths, 15 hundredths? Let's look at that place value and see. What is that place value of the five? It is the? Um, thousand. thousand. So this is 15 what? Thousand. Okay. So now we're ready to divide. If I have 30 tenths divided by five, how many tenths do I have? If I have 30 tenths divided by 5, how many tenths do I have? 6, six what? Tenths. 6 tenths. Okay. And if I have 15 thousandths divided by 5, what do I have? 3 thousandths. So I know that my answer must be 6 tenths and 3 thousandths. Now can we write that in standard form? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know I need to have a 6 in the tenths place and a 3 in the thousandths place. We can see that these two math problems, they have the same numbers. It's a 4 and then an 8 divided by a 6, and the quotient is an 8. For the bottom, look at the bottom. You still have a 4 and an 8 next to each other. The divisor is still a 6, and the answer still has an 8, right? We can mm -hmm. see that that is the same. But what's different about these problems? Go ahead and talk to your table group. In this first problem, what's our quotient? 48. 48 what? 48, what is this place value? One. Right, I have 48 ones. Okay. In the second problem, I still have 48 of something, but now I have 48 what's, Lakshan? Ah. Okay, so now I have 48 tenths. Let's look at the quotients. My quotient was 8, 8 what's? 8 ones. And now my quotient is 8 what? Tenths. What pattern do you notice? What pattern do you notice, Tara? They're both eight. Okay, they're both eight, but what other patterns do you notice? Itai? Um, the, the, um, the, uh, the, you just When I was, what's my dividend here? What's the place value of my dividend? 48 what's? What? Ones. And so my quotient needs to also be eight what's? One. Okay, over here, my quotient is 48 what's? Tenths. And some, or sorry, my dividend is tenths, so then my quotient must also be tenths. What relationship do you notice between the dividend and the quotient, Arhan? So whenever I place the, uh, what do you call it, dividend is in, mm -hmm. uh, the answer will be eight tenths. 
Right. So whatever place value you have in your dividend, you must also have in your quotient.